one so we are already on the last part of lesson one on the study of globalization so uh, before we move on just a simple recap on the lesson one part one we were able there to uh, define what is globalization and identify the many definitions of globalization also we were able to illustrate the historical foundation of how globalization is being introduced today and even no uh, part of discussion in every school another is the indicators of globalization the nature we have also the dimensions the reasons and lastly the stages of globalization so right now there is still part of the sort of globalization that we must take so uh uh first no uh is the merits of globalization so when we say merits of globalization, okay, in simple terms, when we say merit, it is well understood as advantages. Okay, so these are no, these are some advantages of a certain company or institution gets from globalization. So number one, global competition imports keep lead on a prices such that inflation is likely to derail economic growth what does this mean okay let us put this let us put it this way for example a certain international business okay so doon tayo sa mas kilala doon sa tinatawag doon sa business na uh, more on fast food chains okay on fast food chains, isa sa pinakakilala is the McDonald's. McDonald's is an American fast food company. We're in a franchise of which is being no is being uh, uh, is being introduced in the Philippines right now. Okay, so we are actually embracing that international company. Okay, in that that international company became now globally competitive. And its products and services are being imported in the Philippines. So most likely, there is an increase on the prices on the goods and services. But eventually, did not affect the economic growth of the Philippines. Okay? So we Filipinos are actually you know, very fond of uh, uh, doing or uh, yung tinatawag nating sunod lagi sa uso. Or we are always going on the trend so even though we do not have enough money if there is a certain business no that has opened we do not want to miss it so uh that is a reality na nagpapatunay dito sa number one advantages it does not affect really no the prices or we do not think really the prices and even it doesn't affect our economic growth much more it does give no it does give no an increase on income on a certain state or on a certain no community so that what that is what the number one advantages mean next an economy is per fast innovation with fresh ideas from abroad of course if we if we if a certain company is being globally competitive its company will eventually encourage no uh, more innovation or advanced innovation or new products fresh ideas and fresh no fresh uh, fresh no methods from abroad it is it can either be in economic aspect in in, in cultural aspect on social aspect no in a political aspect so in number two we were able to uh, or we may adapt no we may adapt changes or we may adapt no much faster or much advanced ideas for a change so uh, uh, like for example na lang po ano what is being what is the trend today is we are more we are much more on korean ideas okay so more or less no uh what has happened now in our local city okay there are some places or there are some companies who are already no uh into advance or into adapting the culture of 
Korean. So, nandyan ang Samyupsal. Okay? So, uh, nandyan din yung uh, the trend of uh, uh, doing the haircut, doing the uh, dressing up like Koreans, or the makeups. Okay? So, those are some fresh ideas no, that is being introduced now in our community. <clears throat> so, that explains it. Okay? And then another, <clears throat> export jobs often pay more than other jobs. So when we when we say no, when we say export job, this is more likely exporting no, exporting uh, goods and services from a country who 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 has insufficient no, who has this insufficient product that we have. So like for example in the Philippines, okay what uh what do we usually export is uh some of our, our agricultural products what are these agricultural products for example bananas okay so when we export bananas no uh we acquire dollar for it okay so when we export no we earn an income in dollar okay most likely because when that country or when a certain country no imported from us that banana okay ay mas mahal po ang presyo po doon so when we are going to sell we can earn that much of money because they do not have much of that banana in that place example na lang in the islamic countries somewhere in islamic countries no wala silang masyadong saging doon and Philippines is one of the exporting no countries of such no agricultural product, the banana. So uh, according to a friend of mine who is living there right now, mahal nga po ang saging doon. Not unlike in the Philippines, no, pwede nating hingin, pwede nating yung iba nga, nga po ninanakaw pa. So uh, it is uh, the price here is much lesser than another country. That's why that's why uh, export jobs at are often pay more than other jobs. Okay, next, unfettered capital flow keeps interest rates. So when we say unfettered capital flow, it refers now to the movement of money for the purposes of investment trades or business operations. Ibig sabihin na uh, uh, if a certain country opens to be globalize or to be globally competitive no there will be a limited or there will be an unlimited no inflow of investment inflow of trade and business operations in such country like us yes okay we are very open with that okay we are very open with no different no foreign investments in our country and in reality it is no it is true right now and of course we are already experiencing and adapting it right now next number five okay living standards go up faster of course if you are in a certain place who is or in a certain country who is very you no know, globally competitive dito kasi sa atin hindi pa tayo masyadong globally competitive because we refuse because um natatakot tayo na baka tayo ay uh, uh, or maulit yung pangyayaring tayo ay sakupin no ng ibang bansa or uh, maybe mawawala ang ating kult pagiging kulturang Pilipino kung uh, masyado nating uh, i-adapt or i or i-embrace no ang kultura ng iba at ang uh, pamamalakad ng iba or uh, pagsunod sa sa kung uh, sa mga ini-introduce ng ibang country Okay, so uh, uh, even though no, there is still an advantage of it because the living standard go up faster. When we say living standard, okay, so this refers now to the amount of material goods and services no that are available to give to give no such uh, good opportunity to a certain place or to a certain undeveloped country like Philippines. So, if there are no foreign industry or foreign businesses who will invest in our country, 
mas malaki yung chance na meron tayong oportunidad na magkaroong ng trabaho. Example na lamang po noon. Or we will be, no, we will be having, no, basic material facts to her such as, no, increasing our income, also our life expectancy and economic opportunity and etc. So our living standards would probably go up if we will be introduced into foreign in, we will be introducing introduce more to foreign investments next productivity grows more quickly when countries produce goods and services in which they are of comparative advantages so productivity productivity now is uh, understood as the quality of producing so mas malaki yung chance ng uh, pagdami ng uh, uh, our uh, productivity process in our country will increase no when countries now are uh, to invest in our country because we are of comparative advantages so ano ba tong comparative advantages na to refers now to the economy's ability to produce goods and services at a lower opportunity costs. So, uh, ito yung uh, uh, tinatawag natin na kapag uh, we are the one who is producing the material in our own raw material and we are going to export it and sell it to other country no, with much lower costs. But the productivity of it is equivalent to much income. So, so uh, the law of supply and demand. So, kapag in demand yung product natin and a certain country would want it, tataas yung income natin. So, yun naman yung napakaganda doon. Hindi lamang sa productivity or the quality of the products that we are producing, but also the income that we are going to acquire. Next, countries liberalize their visa rules and procedures so as to permit the full flow of people from country to country. Of course, right now, that is really happening. We already have the freedom to go wherever we want to go, so as long as we have our own visas and passports. Okay? Other countries now loosen up the rules and procedures. Kaya nga po nagkaroon tayo ng COVID because of that. Because uh, we do not tend to uh, disregard that human right or that liberalized that liberal right that people have now in our in, in in any part of the world kaya naman no one of the crises that we are experiencing today since this is an advantage of globalization now one of which can consider to be a disadvantage okay but ang kagandahan naman noon is we likely to uh have an, a good opportunity to go to other country to explore to adapt and to be able to uh, be innovative or to acquire innovative ideas okay that uh, we could apply in our own country next it results in freeing up the productive sector to investment and the productive sector to export related activities resulting in a win-win situation for the world economy okay so what are the productive sector and what are the unproductive sex sector so the productive sector now on the part of the philippines it is now the agricultural products on the part of unproductive sector to investment these are most likely no the uh uh, uh what what do we call this other other things no other things like uh, that that we could introduce such business like for example the television equipment for advertising and uh, for services the guards protecting offices so those are more likely unproductive sector that we could consider okay so it is a win-win situation because katulad nung uh, 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 kaninang uh, advantages natin na nasabi ko if we have these resources and we are going to sell it to other country, then mataas yung export income natin. And of course, if we have also such, uh, like for example, 
our OFWs, they have the so-called agencies. And those OFWs are being brought to other country for their skills, for their talents, and even their good services to other, no, to other nations and to other no, culture and or nationality. So that is no, what we could uh, uh, consider as an advantage. No? It, it could consider be as an investment and it is also, no, it is also uh, considered to give growth to our economy. Next, okay, so we are already done on the merits and demerits of globalization. Ngayon naman po, pupasok tayo sa demerits of globalization. So, kasalungat ng tinataw nating merits, these are now the disadvantages of globalization. So, uh, of course, in any aspect naman, no, there are advantages and disadvantages. So, what are the advantage, disadvantages? Number one, several people lose their jobs when companies import cheap labor or materials or shift production abroad. Okay? So, like for example, bakit nga ba ginugusto ng iba nating kababayan na pupunta sa ibang bansa? Ang rason ay malaki ang kita. But on the side on the company na sila, na pinapasukan nila, okay, may, may disadvantage sa part nila at meron ding advantage. The disadvantage of which, no, is yung mga tao doon na nagtatrabaho. Like for example, in a certain factory, they will not hire their own people or yung mga kalahi nila kasi mas mahal yung bayan. Not unlike if they will hire people from other country, country there is so-called cheap labor okay for factories like in china we have also in vietnam we have also in indonesia we have also in mexico they are merely hiring no people from other countries simply because mas mura yung ibinabayad sa kanila not unlike no if they are with those people no or mga kalahi nila, alam nila kasi ang kalakaran. So, alam nila yung kanilang karapatan. Well, we know of course our karapatan, pero kasi kapag tayo ang pupunta doon, mas mababa po yung bayan natin. Uh, which is, apparently, ang tingin natin, malaki. Let's take for instance ulit on, in the United States. no I have friends who are living there who are actually a witness ng, uh, ng uh, cheap labor or uh, has no a good pay on a certain job. Like for example, yung uh, magbubuhat ka lang ng watermelon, you do already have $10 no? in a single watermelon that you are going to no? uh, that you are going to uh, or uh, that you are going to hold on to. Oh, so na not unlike no in the Philippines pag nagbuhat ka ng watermelon piso lang dalawa dalawang piso lang 5 pesos lang so most likely parang ang laki lang ng tingin kasi it's in dollars but eventually no that is no uh, being part of import cheap labor uh, which is apparently nakakalungkot because as of today a large number of ship production abroad when we say ship shift production abroad Workers are more willing to work abroad right now, which is apparently, they look at it as an advantage, they look at it as an additional income, so that their families here in our country will live in a much comfortable way. But on the country itself, no, it is a disadvantage because people there will lose jobs because of the increasing import of cheap labor. Next, workers face pay cut demands from employers who often threaten to export jobs. Okay? So, workers face pay cut demands. Of course, uh, we can link this to the demerit number one. If there are people oh, of, if there are people who will lose their job because of the import cheap labor, there are also workers who will face pay cut demands. Okay? 
So, from employers, because of the threat of export job. Mas malaki nga naman kasi ang kita sa export job. Kaya, why not cut some workers to work for the company since meron silang mas pagkakakitaan na mas malaki. Next, unregulated globalization can cause serious problems to poor and developing countries in terms of labor force, wages, benefits, job termination, and others. This is very true. Okay? So, what are these unregulated globalization? These are not controlled or supervised by the regulation of law. Like, for example, the black market or the illegal market. Okay? Or there are even illegal, no? Illegal, uh, illegal ways of businesses that, is, that are being no, introduced now in our country and other countries are experiencing it also. So, this can cause serious problems, most especially to undeveloped country or the third world countries like the Philippines. Okay? Like the Philippines. In terms of, of course, labor force, the wages will go down, there will be no benefit, and there will be job terminations and others. Okay? So, kapag hindi legal ang isang company, Hindi ka secured. So, kapag hindi maganda ang pamamalakan ng isang kumpanya kasi hindi siya permitted by our government, so, hindi ka kampante or you are not comfortable that you will stay long in the company. So, you as a future professional should know kung tama ba yung kumpanyang pinapasukan mo. Next, high foreign stake on industries where it is not necessarily needed could affect the economic growth of domestic enterprise. Of course, yung pagtaas o paglago ng uh, foreign investments sa ating bansa ay pupwedeng, uh, pupwedeng maka-apekto sa mga lokal na businesses na mayroon ang ating bansa. Most likely because we Filipinos, ulitin ko lang, I would just like to reiterate, are much more into adapting new no new uh, new uh, uh, trends no sunod tayo lagi sa uso so we tend to forget now our local no enterprise or our local no uh, products so we tend to uh, so uh, that could affect no that could affect the our local companies or our local businesses in our countries next sovereignty of country and company institution may be at stake eto na po yung sinasabi ko kanina na kinakatakutan ng ibang Pilipino kaya po kung maaari hindi natin ina-adapt or we are of uh, we are refusing no we are refusing to the idea of our government to adapt foreign countries in our country kasi nga natatakot tayong bumalik sa mga sa kasaysayan ng ating bansa na tayo nga po ay uh, uh, sinakop ng ibang kultura ng ibang bansa so these are the disadvantages that we could acquire if we are going to continue no if 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 that certain business or institution will no will adapt globally Station. Okay? So next, doon naman tayo sa importansya kung bakit kailangan nating pag-aralan ang terminolohiyang globalization. So these are the following reasons why in today's contemporary world is important for you students to understand and appreciate this study of globalization. Number one, there is a greater demand in business and industry, health, engineering, and technology to have people who can work with people of other nations and cultures. Now, if you will study well, and you will acquire this very important or one of the most relevant jobs or courses right now, the IT, okay, you will have a big chance to go abroad to be united with with other people, with other culture, with other nation, no? To work there and acquire a big income. Mas magiging malaki ang demand natin on business industry. Most especially now in health, engineering, and technology, no? 
it is of a great help that many of us you know, are working on the health industry because of the crisis that we are facing today. So uh, eventually this crisis that we're experiencing is a demerit of globalization. Kasi nga masyado na tayong open. We are too much interconnected to other countries. We do loosen up our rules and regulation in terms of going out and in into a certain country. That's why we are facing this crisis today. I'm not, uh, I'm not, uh, uh, hindi ko naman pinapakasalanan itong globalization na ito, but uh, umabot tayo sa punto na nakulangan na tayo ng limitasyon. Anyway, next, there is a greater demand in promoting the local business and industry to other countries. If, if need be, owners travel in their in independently and internationally for a better promotion. Of course. Okay, of course. If we are on a greater demand in business and industry, and we're going to be professional in the future, wanting to have our own, uh, our own uh, business, as an entrepreneur or an IT entrepreneur, so we may be able to promote our local businesses in other countries, most especially if we would want to work abroad. So there is a big chance that we may introduce our local, no, our local uh, products. Next, we have also the contemporary world face global challenges that will take interdisciplinary groups to solve these challenges. These challenges are how to provide access to clean water, environment, clean renewable energy that is affordable to everyone, and how to deal with in unpredictable climate change, just to name a few. We have also our democracy, population, and resources, the rich and poor gap, and the health issues. Okay? So the importance of studying globalization is having this group or what we call the interdisciplinary group who will do you know, who will do who has different ideas who has different cultures but interconnected with each other in order to solve this kind of challenges. Okay? Just like the crisis again, the crisis that we are facing today is the very good example. So there are certain groups all around the world who are eventually, no, who are eventually interconnecting each other's ideas, each other, no, opinions, each other's research for us to be able to acquire a solution on this crisis that we are facing today. That is one of the most relevant part of the of this of studying globalization right now so napakaswerte tayo that we are able to study this kind of term so that hindi naman tayo maging ignorante no so that it could prevent us from ignorance of what really is happening right now because right now no opinions of every person we respect that we do have our own opinions but eventually there are these people who are sacrificing just to have a solution of the problem that we are facing right now. So these global challenges need to be solved as soon as possible through the gathering and sharing of information across disciplines, institutions, and other entities in a global scale. Okay? So it will be well accepted if there are well no, information that are being given. Just like we have the United Nations, the World Health Organizations, and the many organizations, government organizations that we have right now. Next, creating meaningful, harmonious, and workable relations that link globally in an important aspect of the merits of globalization, especially if one wishes to be the president of the future generation. Of course, this is an opportunity for you later on if you are going to study at sineryoso natin ang pag-aaral ng globalization and if you would want or it is a dream for you to become the president of the Philippines later on, then it is this simple study where you can start no your future no your uh, future plans for our country okay so we can create harmonious and workable relationship that we could get along with other countries next knowledge of the merits the merits and resources of globalization will enable the students to work as a model of collaborative international team 
in the near future along the areas of business, education, health, science, arts, engineering, hotel industries, etc. and discuss best products in these areas. Okay? So yes, you can be a model of a collaborative international team. So, uh, hindi natin kasi alam eh, because you do have a bright future, no? Going ahead of you. And there will be a lot of or of opportunities na po pwedeng uh, makamit mo or po pwedeng uh, uh, that will come along your way. Okay? So, uh, huwag niyong sayangin. Because this study of globalization, you might use this later on if somewhat in your endeavor or someday if you're if you would want to be no, if you are success enough to be com globally competitive, so you can start here. Next, okay. So the last five items, okay, we were able to distinguish the importance of globalization itself. So right now, naman, we are going to tackle the importance of global the importance of globalization. Sorry to everyone para sa ating lahat naman. So according to Neil Kokmuller, Kokmuller, sorry, Neil Kokmuller, a writer, globalization is the expansion of local economies and businesses into a broader international marketplace. What does this mean? What does no Neil Kokmuller would want to say? Okay? Would or would want to indicate that small businesses have gotten active in global environment as the internet and mobile technology have enabled communications across continents and countries. This is now, no, this is now the explanation of the global expansion that is being introduced by Neil Koch Mueller. So a small businesses right now, even in the Philippines, has already the active or has already a wide resources, no, when it comes to introducing their products online because of the internet and mobile technology that we have right now so we can already you know communicate in any part of the continent or in any part of the world in introducing such product okay next another is one of the advantages that we actually acquire right now is of course the internet okay so we will not be able to uh, introduce this online learning if we do not have internet so internet is considered to be a revolutionized uh, or is revolutionizing the business arena because it created a whole new virtual marketplace that expands beyond physical and geographical boundaries okay companies now in foreign countries can now compete no compete for customers in the united states no or what we call one of the biggest countries no Okay, leveraging our own resources, lowering our cost of labor and affordable affordable distributions. In the same way, US can eventually no, you guys can eventually have an opportunity to appeal no to customer uh, to Filipino customers now in our country, such no such that they will be intro introducing or promoting their goods and services so the internet right now has a big role no hindi lamang po siya sa economic aspect but also in educational aspect on social aspect in terms of political aspect and cultural aspect itself so uh marami na pong nagagawa marami na tayong nakikita marami na po tayong mga na-acquire na kaalaman na gamit lamang po ang internet only if only if we are going to use internet in a good way. So as an IT future professional, or let's say, as an IT professional, we should be the first one to use internet in a much better way, in a good way, and in the right way. Okay? Next. So we're, okay. Next. The development of business industry and 
Income levels in several large population centers has already contributed to the importance of globalization. So the importance of this is in countries which has big population has a big opportunity to grow its income and to have economic growth because no as customers no gain buying power of course mas marami ang kita di ba so uh, uh there is a big chance that a certain company who has big population ang advantage nun, mas malami mas marami ang bibili mas marami ang kikita that's how are we going to explain it? simple way. okay so if a certain country has a large population meaning there is a large customer gaining or customer gain buying power okay so that explains it next we now move on to competition okay competition being globally competitive in the overall need of businesses there is no choice but to compete of course walang business na gusto niyang ganun na lang kababa or walang business na ayaw maggrow and if a certain business would want to grow then they have no choice but to globally compete or locally compete or let's say internationally compete with other countries and or companies who are residing from other country so the influx of foreign competitions in the u.s limits the number of companies in some industries because of the high demand of foreign countries who would want to compete just to invest in united states there is the united states has its limitations in accepting such company in such way if you would want to expand globally you have to consider following the suit okay so any money other companies make in foreign markets they can bring back to us invest it in promoting their brands products and services domestically so if it, if their foreign investment is not successful in other countries or in such a big country like united states they can eventually use it in other countries and then later or later on kapag tumaas ang kanilang income they can eventually go back to us and invest there and introduce their product there so Sa ngayon po ang pinaka alam, ang alam kong meron ng mataas na demand in terms of being globally competitive sa Filipino product or sa Filipino services are our artists our artists or the fashion artists right now they are being already introduced now internationally and that's part of no that's part of no uh being globally competitive next we have also diverse population so business trends often mirror broader societal trends in the united states and the world in general has become very diverse so what is diversity okay diversity is having a range of people and various racial ethnic socioeconomic and cultural backgrounds and various lifestyle experiences and interests with an equal representation of ages, race, race, gender, socioeconomic status, and etc. Okay, so right now, no, in the United States, the United States is actually one of the countries who has an increase of immigrants. No, uh, ang alam ko sa US, isa sa pinakamarami na immigrants doon are Filipinos. Marami na pong uh, gustong mamuhay doon okay so as people move to different parts of the world they spread different ideas perspective and customs so uh, the adaptation of different cultures ideas and perspectives are being introduced in other countries so that is one of the advantages of being no, globally known no as a filipino because in any parts of the world filipino are filipino culture is really being introduced and are very well known even filipino talents no different competitions abroad no sumasali pong iba't pilipino 
and they are they are uh, well uh, recognized there so foreign born citizens also so uh, mga ating uh, kapwa filipino who are actually born in the u.s or in other parts of the country they are using now their own uh, cultural background there as a born citizen in that certain country and if they would want to put up a certain business in our country they will be going back here to introduce such uh, business so what i am trying to say is that for example ako po right isa akong pilipino na buhay ako sa korea kasi pangarap ko sa korea nabuhay ay ipinanganak ako sa korea now i've lived there for 20 years for example so what the culture that i've adopted in korea the food the dress the makeup or the the uh, custom the belief that i've acquired there now if i'm if i would like to go back to my own country which is the philippines i would like what would i do is to put up a certain business that is introducing no the culture the belief the uh, fashion that i've acquired in korea so that explains the diverse population now there is a certain fresh idea na meron akong uh, i-introduce sa sarili kong bansa sa sarili kong bansa kasi puro pilipino ako but i'm a born citizen in korea so that explains diverse population in simple way next okay let's now move on to theory of comparative advantages okay so this theory states that countries that are good at producing particular good are better off exporting it to countries that are less efficient at producing that good conversely the latter country can then export the goods that if produces in an efficient manner to the former country which might be deficient in the same okay uh, let's explain it in a much more simple way okay this comparative advantages i what i can understood here is the exchange of good and services which are deficient from one country to the other. Okay? Halimbawa, Pilipinas, Saudi. Ang Pilipinas, meron tayong agricultural product na saging. Ang Saudi, wala niyan. Now, si Pilipinas will export saging to Saudi. Okay? Now, Saudi will import saging from the Philippines. Simply because, Saudi has a deficient product of saging. That's why this Saudi is in need of the agricultural product that Philippines has. Now, what Saudi has to offer to Philippines? Okay? It can offer the oil. The oil that they have in Saudi. Now, the oil there will now be, no, will now be exported to Philippines Philippines now will import that oil okay so simply because Philippines is deficient in oil that's why no Philippines will be importing no oil from Saudi that is a very simple way on how to introduce or explain the theory of comparative advantages kung anong meron sa isa ibibigay sa wala at kung anong meron sa wala ibibigay doon sa meron okay so, the underlying assumption here is that not all countries are good at producing all sorts of goods and hence, they benefit by trading with each other. Of course, kaya nga po nagkaroon tayo ng interconnectedness. That's why we have this so-called relationship with other country because we do rely on the benefit of trading with each other. Okay? Because there are resources that we do have and they have and there are the resources and we have the res and there are that resources that we have they don't have that they have that we don't have that is the comparative advantages next okay let's move on to the philosophy of underlying globalization napakadali lang naman po ito number one of course 
the thinking underlying globalization at first, since ang globalization po ay bago pa lang. Okay? Bago pa lang sa ideas ng mga tao. Bago pa lang sa pag uh, bago pa lang sa identification ng mga tao. That's why they do not yet embrace this term globalization. And in all discussions of world issues, mas ginagamit natin ang international kesa global. Kasi mas popular or mas madali nating naiintindihan ang international kesa global because globalization has many contradicting definitions as we've defined on lesson 1 part 1 right so in a much simpler way no mas naiintindihan natin ang ang uh, international maybe because bago pa lang din naman kasi sa atin that's why next while normatively speaking, some people associate globalization with progress, okay? So some people accept globalization with progress, prosperity, and peace. May pagkakaisa, may progreso, at merong ikagaganda ng ating buhay. But th there are, no, there are people who are insisting to this. These people now consider globalization as a worst disaster or as a decay hindi maganda para sa isang bansa. That is the thinking of other people or that is the philosophy of other people or other countries that, uh, 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 that do not believe on the term globalization. The common and indisputable characteristics of all, its definition is the view that a process, globalization is a process of economic social, cultural, political activity which transcends nation-state borders and that it pertains to the world as a whole. It is within this context that the multidimensionality of globalization process comes to the fore. Okay? So one of the uh, indisputable characteristics of globalization is that it is a process of economic, social, cultural, and political activity na kung saan no, it surpasses nation state borders. Okay? So globalization is actually our opportunity to go from border to another border to another border. And we could use this to unite uh, all countries around the world and become as one. So that is one of the philosophy philosophy of globalization. Next Globalization is a complex and controversial process. Of course, it is very complex. It's complicated, it's wide, it's big, and of course, it's very controversial. Kasi nga po, ang pagbibuild ng uh, isang mundo na iisa lang ang katangian ng lahat ng bansa ay hindi po madaling gawin yan. Okay? Just like for instance, the... Uh, market or an on, on economic no aspect no the economic unification of the world with uniform patterns of production and consumption okay hindi natin masyadong uh, kayang gawin agad-agad in the first place other countries has different cultures other countries has different opinions the way of thinking of other countries is different from the way of thinking of how filipino things so it's very complex it's very controversial so napaka hirap po yan. next various geological movements of resistance to globalization have been emerging in response to globalization of course there are these ideological movements who are resisting globalization these are the people or this is a movement that what we call anti-globalization movement. Okay? Because why? Why is it that there is such movement? Or why is it that there are people who are resisting globalization? Because they believe, or the, this, the supporters of this anti-globalization, believe that the late 20th century, they characterize as ruling elites. We're in... No, we're in uh, the expansion of world, no, 
the expansion of world uh, the expansion of world or the expansion of market into the world come to their thinking that it is only for personal interest but not for the interest of every people in every country okay so uh, what they suggest is a most uh, is a more democratic no representation and there is an advancement of human rights okay there is also a fair trade and sustainable development for each and every country so uh, there is still a thinking on the globalization aspect like that okay so based on the philosophical dimensions underlying globalization is the free movement of goods of course on the philosophical dimensions of it globalization really is the free movement of goods services and people across the world this is one of the objectives of globalization there should be a free trade to every country additionally no globalization can be thought of to be the result of opening up the global economy and the con concomitant increase in trade between nations in this contemporary world the point here is that globalization had had positive and negative effects a deep approach is needed when discussing the concept what is undeniable in, is that globalization is here to stay hence mas maganda kung ang isang bansa ay makipag compete to global economy at iyakapin ang konsepto at mamuhay na lang sa contemporary world this is much way better than resisting it but because right now we cannot really deny the changes that is happening in every country or in other parts of the world or on the crisis that we are facing right now in our country okay so that ends now lesson one and i would like to leave this thought for you the value of college education is not the learning of many facts but the training of the mind to think by albert einstein thank you